bring some comments. Oh, yo. Okay, we're going to uh, messages and to Q and A. Questions. Green Seal, Sarkangel, Lucifer, Blessing Seal. Yes, there's a lot of uh, shifting always, of course. Humans are, what well, is what humans are allowing to occur? What timelines? Of course, yes, there's much happening in Asia, which is being ignored by your media. It's kind of like that's the, kind of like your, 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 your war now is information war. Of course, that's been going on for some time. But there will be a time when these blackouts won't work anymore. <laughs> Where your media does not have its power. It's it's getting away with it now, but the karma is building up for it. Where you see more truth. As many of you are looking for the truth, let's notice how it gets blocked quite often. Uh, but of course, humanity is not always... Another reason why this is happening is humanity doesn't want to hear it. Here's what's really going on. It does, but it also has a lot to focus on itself. So it's it's focusing on itself and it's not quite accomplishing what it wants to accomplish. Some people do, of course, but not everyone. So it's like, we'll just keep this story going on, events and whatever it is, because I'm not ready to face myself just yet. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. Uh, so that's that's where your world is not opening up completely, as does humanity really want to dive into what it is on a deeper level? There are some that come out, of course, but there's much more. And that's when your Earth control, truly transforms, as you probably feel that. There's a transmission always happening right now, but not at the level. So when you have scandals and blackouts, so that just is, it really means that humanity, at least the majority or some form of majority, doesn't want to hear what's happening at all. But uh, that will change over time. Greetings. We are the felines from Lyra. Yes, you just, people notice their cats. Uh, they're asleep a lot. Of course, they're processing the energies of the people around them. Not just you, but your neighborhood. And you're, of course, usually you're a part of it, but it all depends. You can also let them connect with others that are unrelated to you. It all depends. Of uh, their synchronicity, what they're here to bring to the earth. And it can also help your timeline, of course, have a healthier timeline to accomplish what you're accomplish. So animal beings of any type is just there to help you fulfill your mission. As many of you know, it's not just to get through this life, it's also to bring you to the right timeline. And that is very important, of course. Uh, some find other ways, like connecting with nature, like they can get a plant instead, or talk to nature itself. <laughs> Uh, but that's not for everyone. Sometimes they just need an animal energy because, you know, not everyone has enough energy to connect with everything. This is... But animal vibrations are it, souls in human form. They're warning. And some don't want to deal with all the human situations. They, they prefer just to be an animal forever. But not all. It's always a choice thing. Greetings to you. This is Redmond from Sirius. 
Yes, many are trying to interpret the future. The future is constantly changing, so of course seeing it is going to be a little bit difficult, especially when you might see it clearly, then something else occurs. It's a necessary time, of course, with your politics, many are still scratching their heads of the whole situation. It's not just about disclosure. It is about, yes, humanity itself. It doesn't really have to be about any politics. These politicians are the shadows of your reality. You can still make a change with that, with or without them. And there will be a time when you won't have them anymore. Of course, you need someone to bicker with, of course, make these laws that are kind of mundane, basically to keep you in this reality. So without these kind of dictators here, you are more free. <laughs> so there will be a, eventually there'll be an anti-politician timeline. I may imagine many of you are ready for that. Even an anti-media, I feel the media and the Politicians will go down together eventually, but there's just not enough here just yet to allow it to occur because too many are getting programmed by the system, as you can see. And of course, your school system is plugged into that also in the shadows. So, if you're looking for a future timeline or to manifest a vibration that is one to look into, of course. I'm here, I'm here also to answer questions whenever. Uh, Hello, greetings, Redman. Blessings. Blessings. Welcome back. Thank you for coming in. Um, up first this evening, we have Daria. Hello there, Redman. Greetings. Greetings. Any messages from uh, Lucifer to me? <laughs> um, well, it shows, it shows like you uh, you're dressed in red. Uh, they show like red high heels. Um, somewhere you're doing this, <laughs> uh, but it's all red. Um, yeah, it's a little bit cryptic there. <laughs> well, <clears throat> at least in other realities, you do that. Sometimes you can turn the reality black and white so everyone just sees you <laughs> or you stand out. Okay, I thought that might be a, only just uh, Lucifer's fantasy, but then, okay. Well, there might be some of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going into details of that connection, but yes, it's, um, well, you do show, like, the, the double energies. You do teach them a great, well, you show them there's, it's okay to come out, uh, to be, to play with the humans, you can say. And they do oh. play with humans, but they stay hidden, as you know. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so well, and but they saw it like people take pictures and stuff, they might see devils, uh, something maybe you should look into also. Yeah, cool. I do take pictures with my phone and I see aliens, which is really fun. They form faces and even numbers, but they are is... they're devil forms, just like you know, the tail and things like that. Um, cool, never know. <laughs> that, yeah, I was wondering if they existed but they actually do yeah oh yeah so any other messages from you redman <laughs> there is a golden timeline but i see you breaking it up meaning that you don't want too much luck too soon uh, of course the male energies you're working on of course has a personal timeline that's not mentioned publicly of course but uh, just like a social energy you feel like you're kind of stuck socially uh, due to, at least in your area, yes, humans are not going anywhere, as you can see. And they're kind of frozen in time. Not all of them, but quite a few. I mean, yeah. you usually go to the frozen ones, because they're the ones that are there to break free. But usually, at least, they're, it feels like they're getting more closed off than ever before. Yeah. <laughs> as you notice. Yeah. Um, I have deja vu now, like of this conversation so yeah uh pretty much not happening nothing is happening uh but well, it, well you are on freezing timelines but they freeze it back together again so uh, okay yeah <laughs> but uh thank you for that and happy channeling with this group yes. but add to yeah this is why you connect to, to certain people that you have in the past to you know, where there is a possible positive timeline, but they, of course, a lot of them screwed up. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Gotta fix it then. <laughs> okay. Something to work on too. Blessings. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Dragon. Hi, how are you doing? Greetings. So, uh, my first question is about, um, <clears throat> supposedly, some people, when they die, experience a life review, and because we're so good at reviving people a few minutes after they die, we hear a lot of stories about that kind of stuff now, near-death experience. Um, and uh, what I was wondering, so it, it seems to me like a, a lot of the life review is just unnecessary junk that's kind of experienced by people when they're still sort of in their ego and haven't completely reintegrated with their soul yet. Um, and I was wondering, is it an intrinsic part of what happens when you're passing over, or is it more of a choice that people make, and is it possible to, like, handpick, like, say, I don't care about all that junk, I'm only interested in this and this, or something like that? Well, it's some um, that, yeah, it's a choice. But you do that also, you will do life reviews through your own current lifetime, like an astral. Um, so some... They review it as they're living it. <laughs> I do it even in a waking consciousness. Exactly. Like, yeah. I reflect on things that happened the last month or whatever. Like yeah. Some of that seems like it would just be tedium to me. That would be like... Well, there are some people that like the junk, though. <laughs> which, which is funny that some go into other people's junk and see what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. <laughs> So, so it's really just a, a waste. People are perceiving the reconnection back to soul and sort of the reintegration of all their life experiences back into the soul. Well, yeah, you said some do life reviews when they get older uh, before they leave the earth and they don't like what they see. <laughs> some of them try to change their life, like in their 60s, <laughs> you know, try to revamp themselves. Like, well, what have I been doing my whole life? Uh, and some just don't want to, they don't want to face themselves. They, but some live for a long, very long time because they don't have to face what they just saw or look deeper into it. <laughs> so, so yeah, the reason for, I for, for me, it's more like either the stuff that I, like opportunities I passed up that they had no clue I'd even passed up. Like mm-hmm. maybe I could learn from that or mm-hmm. maybe ways I hurt people that I had no clue I even hurt them. Uh, obviously, if I knew I hurt them, then then I reflected on that already and don't need to go through that again. Um, well, yeah, that's like a, a clearing karma, you know, review you can say. Uh, but you want to, you want to, you know, you want to live through this decently. You don't want to, you know, ruffle too many feathers. Might as well clear it up what, here while you can. Mm. That's why you do that. Some don't care. <laughs> all Thank you. Um, my, uh, I guess my second question is: Do you have any messages for me? Uh, I see a lot of Zeta energies, a lot of time traveling energies. I see you during the time of Richard Nixon. It might be a little bit cryptic there, but I do see you part of the, the Nixon administration. Now, saying what are you doing as an alien being or what it might be, but you were there in some form. Uh, it's because there's a major timeline that occurred there. But they're not saying what it was. So it's a little bit... And you do have a lot of time travel energy, but it seems like something that you're working on now, if I can pick up on. It has to do with what your your world is going into. Like, you can say there's some disclosures that were not disclosed during then that is worked upon in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you're on to... Yeah. I, 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 maybe I've been exploring that nostril to connect to some things in the physical, because I've been flinging a little poop at the communist party right now of china yeah. and uh yes right they don't i don't think most of them even realize that russia almost nuked the hell out of them like in the 70s mm-hmm. or whatever i don't remember the year uh and, and the nixon um, actually stopped it from happening 60s yeah more of 60s but yeah <laughs> now yeah, they're russia, going yeah. around right now threatening to nuke japan and stuff and they're just a bunch of morons <laughs> Yeah, China's been hijacked many times. 
So it is a, a retelling agenda. They're just there to ruffle everyone's feathers. They're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, they don't they don't have to make any sense of any of it. They're just there to muddy the waters for people. <laughs> But that also brings more alien energies into the Earth, too. Because you kind of, they're not no longer afraid to show themselves, either. That's kind of what's happening. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, have, I have faith that eventually people there are going to get tired of it and yes. let go of them. But, I mean, if maybe it's a blessing that Hong Kong was taken over because yes. uh, they're going to sow some discord somehow or another, even though it's highly controlled there. And mm-hmm. the rest of China have gotten so used to being controlled that they maybe need that blood, new blood in there to, to fight the way things are however they can. I, well, I'll figure it out, I guess. Part of China society feels like the regime is necessary for the West. It might not make a whole lot of sense, but the pushback against the West and the West is point of view, you know, their agendas. Not to say China's yeah. perfect, far from it. Maybe from a from a spiritual belief perspective and things like that, although yeah. I'll have to see how that goes because China doesn't even allow spiritualism or religion in their country. <laughs> sort of. The well-controlled version. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Blessings. Yeah, blessings, thank you. Up next, we have Silverclaw. Hello, Redmond. Green suit. Hello. Um, so, my first question. Do you see me getting a passing grade if I study all my past quizzes and the picture diagrams plus the last uh, three chapters? It looks like it. You like barely pass, but yes. <laughs> you get a barely. passing grade. <laughs> So would you recommend just a little more studying from different uh, things? Like yeah, just a, yeah it's just a lot of stuff's not that exciting, <laughs> as you know. Uh-huh. So, but yeah, just keep studying and, yeah, or look up tests online. You can test yourself there. I imagine there are some tests you can find. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to, like, test myself, basically, mm-hmm. on flashcards. So. That would probably be the best way to do it, find something online where you, yeah, where you can test yourself, exactly. Well, but basically what I'm asking is, could I test myself through the um, past quizzes? Because I, I've been trying to, like, make a quiz about the things that I got wrong in my past quizzes. Mm-hmm. So that's basically my plan. Even still, do you think I'd, I'd get, like, a just barely passing grade? Yeah, or more. It's hard to say. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. Mind, it's fluctuate, but it but it feels good. It feels like you might know more than you realize. It's just when you go there, you feel like I can't remember anything. <laughs> But I can say. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I've been told to just study hard. So um, my next question, just uh, any advices uh, for me at this time? I feel like an oh, Anunnaki energy of your past, I'm not familiar with. Now, you were more of the positive Anunnaki. Uh, you did live among Egyptians. You were just not part of, I mean, you kind of like left the group because they're getting, some of them are getting aggressive. So you kind of became a loner, even as an an alien being, and one of them was an Anunnaki lifetime. This is why you're doing what you're doing now with substances and all that. Well, you're trying to alter, you're trying to create an alternative lifestyle, you can say. Uh, but that knows how it's health connected, also. So basically, you're healing yourself. You're trying to make a business out of it, but I feel like you're, it's really about you when it comes down to it. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. But yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. All right, good night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bye. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Tristan. Okay, to talk to you again, Redman. Greetings. Greetings, Steve. Um, my first question is about um. <laughs> My best friend in Montreal is seeming not to be having a very good time, and I've been dealing with my roommate who's not having a good time either. So I want to know, um, uh, well, no, my question is actually for me. Is it time for me to stop worrying about these people and just <laughs> move on? 
um, <laughs> or am I still being useful? Well, I mean, you have a humanitarian side of you. I mean, yes, it's good to not worry about them, but part of you can't help yourself because you're like your roommate, you're keeping your roommate alive, as you probably feel, but I can see. So you kind of like can't help but care. It's part of also your growth is showing what you're capable of. Put up with this type of situation where others that have already ran out the door and left and can't take it. <laughs> it's it's helping a lot i mean it's a difficult situation but like if you can you know some people can help a whole bunch of people but if you can help one person that's still a big deal <laughs> so it's really about this person because if you leave you feel like you get you'll regret it you'll get away from it. Yeah. so yeah yeah i mean that doesn't oh, mean you feel okay. responsible for what he's going through but yeah if you leave yeah. you'll feel responsible there <laughs> Right. <laughs> Got it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, then it's just any general messages. There are timelines for health. Uh, not that you have health issues, but health in general. So it's like you'll look into that in a different way, like your own energy healing. I don't think that makes any sense, a health timeline. But it seems like something that you're like your intuitive ability can actually tap into other people and their health issues actually maybe not right maybe not complete details but you'll have some idea like someone's going through a depression like what your roommate is going through it's teaching you a lot about health right now oh uh, good okay so sometimes it yeah. feels like you can diagnose things pretty quickly let's put that with just a quick intuition connection yeah yeah i noticed that with massage i i, I do massage now to do it uh, oh, eating technique and yeah and yeah uh, so yeah. but with massage i can just kind of put move my hand down and go oh there it is it's, yeah yeah it's especially good. around the spinal cord but that's where a lot of people the lower part of the spinal cord is where a lot of yeah. anguish goes <laughs> so well yeah. but yeah you do your own techniques too from what i can see which is good great but also make people feel comfortable so they're allowing themselves to heal. They say, hey, hello. They're allowed because some people, they just stay guarded and they don't heal. Yeah. I mean, they heal a little bit, but you actually go deeper into that. So it's amazing how when we stop asking people to perform for us, when we can just accept them as they are, then they can be comfortable to be who they are. So, yeah. So, anyway. Well, I do see people that you work on for a massage, if they come back, that's good because you're going, the more they come back, I know it's a business thing, but the other thing is that healing is really about healing in the long run. Is it shows that they mm -hmm. want to, you know, cure themselves or find a cure to what they're going through. And it does work eventually. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. yeah. Like okay. mostly, mostly what you're healing is uh, depression with people. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Hey, blessings, thank you. Up next, we've got Michael. Blessings, Fred, man. Greetings. Okay, uh, something bad happened in the last two days. Uh, my brother, and I pretty much know about him. He's carrying like a demonic parasite on him, and mm -hmm. my dad is too as well. Mm -hmm. So, so we're happy. Me and my mom are raising our vibration, and we're happy, and mm -hmm. everything's going great. Well, he called my mom, and he's like, "I have nowhere to stay," and he's giving he's manipulating them mm -hmm. you know i have nowhere to go i don't have nothing i don't have no food this that the third you know it's been going on for 15 years mm -hmm. he will not get a job he won't you know mm -hmm. but but anyway let me cut to the chase so he stays one night and i can feel the negativity so bad my intuition mm -hmm. i can feel it i can feel it and I, I was like mama i don't want him here and and they agreed mm -hmm. okay so he stayed two nights okay the third night he just showed up and 
had, um, they told him he had to go. And of course, I'm the protector of the house. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy who has to do the dirty work. Well, um, two nights ago, me and him had a a couple of altercations. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to brag, but, you know, nine years I did Muay Thai. I had amateur fights. And, um, you know, I'm, I, you know, I can, you know, somebody that, you know, doesn't have any kind of fighting skills, I could easily, anyway, moving on. Anyway, so he keeps picking at me and picking at me and picking at me, right? So the last, when I was going to bed, he banged on my door I was saying the Wi-Fi was out. And I don't remember what happened, the words, but he dropped down on his knees and grabbed my testicles. I had, like, you know, some uh, uh, shorts that are very, you know, that I sleep in. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was trying to rip them off. And he was smiling. And that smile looked like demonic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with my experience, I punched him and knocked him off of me so he would let go of my, you know, anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, they were bleeding. And Mm -hmm. anyway, afterwards, so I was on my knees and I sat there and I punched him and I elbowed him probably about 20 times easily. I messed up his face real bad. And anyway, my dad comes in there and he's blaming it all on me. And Mm -hmm. I'm just taking up for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the protector of this house, you know, physically or demonic. And so finally, the, the police come, and oh my gosh, uh, my dad's got dementia, and my dad and my and my brothers with my dad with the, another police officer, and they're like making up all kinds of stories. And my mom, thank God that my mom told the truth, or I would have been in jail. Mm-hmm. So. Please let me know. Was this a psychic attack? What was this? Well, it's kind of like an- angels and demons. So you can say your brother's energy is kind of yeah angry at you, or kind of looking at him the way that you look at him. You know, he feels like he's left out. You know, you feel like he's lower than you or what it feels like. So he fights you. <laughs> so if you just change your energy and just not that, yeah, just shift your energy where you can just not, because he keeps coming back because you don't want him there. <laughs> so to what, to, to what now? Well, because he keeps coming back because you don't want him there. <laughs> so he's playing games with you, basically. <laughs> so, okay. so if he's just like, oh, sure, come on over. And you're not having any difficulties, you know, you're just like, okay, I'm not going to fight with him. I'm just going to accept him for what he is. And not that you're judging him. Um, of course, you know, this is a short version of it. Um, yeah, and just because he feels that you don't like him. And so he obviously he just wants to pick a fight with you, as you can see. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. So yes. this and, is, and, oh. yeah. Go ahead. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This is how the lower dimensions work. I mean, or demonic energies work. But, you know, so the lighter energies can feel like over light. So he's just there to... You're finding a way to balance light and dark, basically. <laughs> so. Well, what about my dad? Because he's, mm-hmm. like, picking his side. Well, yeah. Well, that's, that's the rubbing into you. So you got to have to make peace with him on an energy level. No, you are positive energy, but you're, you know, kind of accepting what he is, what he's going through, 
I know it sounds strange, but you know, just not to judge him <laughs> because it's a short version of it. So, hopefully, some of that makes sense. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, you are, as you heighten your vibration, darkness gets darker. <laughs> so you're going up in the, the field, so darkness is going to try to, you know, it's coming after you. So if you just, I mean, you can still go up and just see and look at them differently. So it's pretty much a psychic attack. Something like that, yeah. But I felt so bad because I still love my brother, but yeah. I had to I had to elbow him probably twenty times and his face is so messed up. Yeah, so just you wanna repair that relationship though. You know, whatever you feel is best though. Cause it's not okay. gonna end. <laughs> the more we see. So Okay. And my say Yes. And um, my second question is, both the dogs, but my parents' dog is a whole lot older, mm -hmm. and she's always has problems. But my dog, Zoe, my spirit guide here on Earth, she, is, she hasn't eaten in four days, and she has, she's like throwing up diarrhea. I don't know if this this is causing all this negativity that's been here has yeah, caused some of it. this some of it. Uh, please tell me. I, me. I don't want her. I don't want her to leave. Not right yet. Please, could you tell me? We can talk to your her. vet. You talk to your vet. Get their opinion. Not, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, get their opinion. I feel like she'll get out of this phase, but she's not really talking to us what to do. But yeah, just a lot of negativity. Just you can send healing to her and just calm your energies with your brother. That'll help. Because she saw this coming before it happened. So. Okay. So. Okay. Well, thank right. you. Bless Blessings. Blessings. Okay, thank you. Up next, we have Susan. Greetings, Redmond. Greetings. I'm wondering, my 20-year-old um, grandson, Austin, is mm. sick with Epstein-Barr, and I wondered what I could do to help him. Oh, I just sent him energy. I mean, just, he just needs to see doctors, that's all, or just a regular doctor. Okay. Uh, I feel like just your energy alone will help, but it's something that he has to go through. What we're feeling, so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And my second question is, um, do you have any messages for me? I did see you connecting to Archangel Michael's energy for as many other angels. Archangel Michael's ener energy to help you connect to, us to your children's energy to release blockages, uh, but also to have, for you to have a better understanding of why they're choosing the choices that they are. So you're there in the back. Basically, you have like a, even your own lives are kind of like an angelic life. Where you can't interfere with, with uh, what's going on. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Blessings. Blessings. I believe it's me next. Yes. Uh, hi, Redmond. Yes. Blessings. Yes, go ahead. Thanks for coming through to answer our questions. I appreciate it. Yes. Uh, so, firstly, I'd like to ask, uh, what have I been up to in the astral lately? I feel like it's been getting kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, well, the future. Okay. As, as much as future, I feel there is an Asian energy there. I believe they're there to stop a war in China. <laughs> oh, that's good. I hope I'm doing well there. <laughs> It seems like that's it feels China. There's this alternative timelines that the Earth can go into. Okay. So this year might feel yes yeah, a little bit heavy, but you might feel other alter other realities coming through you. Yeah, I feel, you do. yeah. 
I've I've definitely felt like when I've woken up a few times, I felt like I've been in battles and stuff like that. Yeah. And so the dark, interesting. Yeah, the darker ones you're avoid. You know, you you wake up you might experience it, but it also means that you're. I would say you're removing it, pushing it away. You could say. Okay. Cool. So. Thank you. So, for my second message or second question, I would like to ask if you have any messages for me. <clears throat> There is a connection to course go by what you feel of Daniel, you know, in the Bible. You might like have a connection there. Maybe it's an alien energy, but you do have connections to the biblical world. You might not feel that right now, but we okay, see that's... Daniel like you're giving him messages, basically, let's put it that way. <laughs> as a as an alien being, look at it from that point of view. Okay. Uh, we see you working behind the scenes in biblical timelines. Oh wow. <laughs> That, so, that's something I need to look into because I haven't really felt much of yeah, that. Oh, for, yeah, for obvious reasons. Well, it's yeah. <laughs> not necessarily for this reality, but there might be somewhere, you know, in the past that you feel, we just feel Daniel. Okay. I'll definitely look into it. Thank you very much. Blessings. blessings. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, up next, we have Christy. Greetings. Greetings. And so I was uh, just tuning in to Marvin and asking, um, well, I was looking at his Mars um, reptilian aspect, and I felt like a heart activation. So I was just wondering my connection to that energy as well. Like, um, how am I, like, his part of his family there? Or I just Wait, wondering. your connection to the Martian Zetas, you mean? I know uh, the reptilian. Reptilian. I was seeing him as a reptilian, and he was like uh, drawing in the sand and laughing. Who is this drawing in the sand? Marvin. Marvin. In, the, in our chat here. Yeah, because that's where I'm getting mixed energies there. Uh, well, you observe him. I mean, you observe him. You, I believe you've been a spirit guide to him in your previous lifetime, for several lifetimes. Um. So he has been, yes, a reptilian being, kind of <laughs> taking his chance. Like, if you have an experienced guide, you can pretty much do anything almost. <laughs> so, I mean, you've had reptilian connections with the Martians, and but I see with Marvin, you helped him in his incarnation. So, even we had no idea what he was getting himself into. So, so with the sand, I feel like it just gets sending you a message at the that you have a connection to us. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, Hayden, he wants to ask his question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Say hi. Hi, I've been a message for me from i Ben. Uh, you're, yes, sometimes you go into 12th right. dimension realities. You do work with nature. A lot, actually, medicines uh, in nature for people to discover. So he he works with a lot of uh, inventors. No, your son does. Uh, you know, so it helps with them getting downloads for certain, even on other planets, uh, like like a Pleiadian world. They're looking for a cure to a disease, and you know, Hayden can you know assist them with that. But he does it in a higher dimension. So. As you probably tell, he's used to higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he's yeah. in fourth dimension, he would not have an issue at all here. Of course, he'd be very alien, of course. But, but. He was asking that he was asking your, yours and his Zeta uh, if y'all have a, a message from the Zetas, you and him, or that Ivan is. and him. Yeah. Uh. Um, usually on Zeta motherships, uh, far from this planet, actually, actually on a, another universe, uh, helping with uh, realities to be created, and of course other plant lives and things like that. Uh, but actually, for different species to uh, to be developed. Okay. 
Bye, Ivan. See you later. Okay, blessings. Thank you. Up uh, next, we have Annie. Hi, greetings. Greetings. Are there any messages for me? Uh, it seems like a timeline shift. Uh, it seems like you're shifting at certain times of the day, like 12 o'clock, you shift your reality, like afternoon times. We should do it more than that. But it seems like the afternoon time is when you figure out, like you're seeing the future, and around the noon o'clock is when you decide where you want to go. <laughs> At least that's why I see there. <laughs> now you do other timeline shifts, of course, but it seems like around the noon is where it's like you wake up in the morning, so okay, I have this plan, and then around noon is where things start to uh, at least in the easier way I can see. <laughs> that's what I was wondering, like how many times do I shift? And oh, I guess I time. do a lot. <laughs> you do a major but you do many, yeah, there's no real number for but it's a lot. Yeah. But you wanna sometimes you wanna synchronize with a certain person, a certain energy field for knowledge for yourself, but also you do help others evolve, you know, go into their direction, of course. Um, but of course you don't always realize it. It's like you connect to that person, you do what you need to do there, and then you concentrate on yourself and do your thing. <laughs> ah, okay. And my second question is, um, I was wondering what my connection was with my twin sister, Shelly. Well, She's been a twin brother in previous lifetimes also. She's been a, a father of yours in a previous lifetime also. But I don't know, these twin lifetimes, you have it every now and then. I don't mm -hmm. think you always get along with each other. <laughs> it's like sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, it's not like when she's a brother, she's a little bit more easier to handle. <laughs> ah. so it's just like easier to get when you're you know, the same gender is like, you know, I'm not getting anywhere with this person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like opposites. It's like, you know, she just becomes more closed minded there, it seems. So, so I've had many lives. Yeah, there's many lives then, yeah. out there. Yeah. This, most of them seem to be Palladian connected. Okay. It just, it's just what you accomplish is what matters. <laughs> How you get there is a whole other story. <laughs> huh. Yeah, okay. getting there is a whole another, you know. That's another lifetime. It, it's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you know, it's like work. As you yeah. Know. It's like pretty much a job. I mean, when you yeah. when you connect to her, it's an it's an important. I'm not saying her other lifetimes are not important, but that's when you make that connection, especially like with a twin energy. It's really it shows that you're here to do quite a bit. So, because it's kind of like a reflection of yourself. Okay, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Thank you, blessings. Yeah, blessings, thank you. Up next, we have Crystal. Greetings, Brittany. Greetings. I want to see if you have any messages for me. Yes, greetings. Any messages for me? guidance or anything guidance on uh, what exactly what are you looking for i need a decision making with my current roommate for example um like what exactly what, what are you looking for with that like, um, so is there a time for, uh, we're supposed to be separating <laughs> i just wanted to see is there a timeline on that by the moving out type of separation yep possibly a couple months Okay. Maybe sooner, but it seems like they're kind of prolonging it a little bit, slowing it down. If you have noticed that, I did notice that. I thought so. I was like, "There's a reason things are being slowed down." It's like every time it's about to happen, something happens. Yeah, the roommate's doing it on purpose. I don't think the roommate has much somewhere to go. Yes and no. <laughs> oh, so, so you think he knows? Knows that he's doing it on purpose. No, he knows it's coming because I because I haven't discussed it with him. Um, not not on a physical level, no. Okay. But on a spiritual level, yeah. Oh. But don't if you talk to him, he's not going to know anything. Oh, okay, okay. So a couple uh, of just months. wait, wait for the right time. Okay. 
But do you you do you do you do see him moving out? Yeah, but I do see him taking his time doing it though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's the big thing there. Once you finally give him the goods, if you like, it might. This possibly might wait six months before I'm getting him out before he finds a place to live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my husband. I call him my roommate because it's more that than anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> So yeah, he doesn't. What I got, what I got, yeah, that he's just finding a place to live. Okay, as you know, an issue. All right. Any messages for me? I do see you connecting more to the God consciousness source energy. So yes, like for this decision, you know, you ask for assistance, and sometimes you're reluctant to say what's on your mind. Nothing wrong with that. But because a lot of times when you give like advice or connections, you can go deep into a person's energy and they're not always be able to handle it. Not that you're doing, you know, but just, yeah, I guess I get from your guy's mind, your words, not that you're using poor judgment in words now, but just like if you give someone a spiritual connection or message or just in life, because when you say something, it cuts right through them, as you probably know that. Already. <laughs> oh my God, that makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The way I, I get it, they don't get it at that level, so they can't handle it, it. Exactly. Yeah. Some of your yeah words are like a knife, and people are not ready to be cut. Like and it's, that. it has nothing to do with being malicious. It's, it's just no, like, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. I'm not trying to do anything like that. It's just oh your God. tone. So yeah, just like you want to say something like for your roommate, you know, juggle the approach. Okay. Think about the approach, how it approaches where we can be civil. Because you can say that, like, I'm ready to get out of here or whatever. And that can go, go and knock him out for two days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, right. I think he has some idea of that. Yeah. He might not show it, but, you know, internally people go through a lot. Right, so. right, right. I mean, it's like you ain't going to bandage. I mean, is there a right way to do it? Just mind your words how you do it. Yeah, just, okay. just yeah, just say oh, you know, it was kind of like your intentions just to say it in a way where they can handle it. If that makes sense. Okay. I want it down. If I care. Okay. Just okay. talk to them on their level. <laughs> okay. Your level okay. is here, and a lot of people are not at the same level. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, because your frequency is just very high. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, feel, I felt that lately. Like my 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 yeah. um, third third eye and crown are like through the roof. Yeah, your energy can connect to higher frequency. What is a higher frequency? It's like singing really loud to somebody. <laughs> I've been singing and a lot can't. too. Yeah, yeah, and they can't hear it because the vibration is so. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Wow. Something. Yeah, it's going to take some a little while to figure out what you know what tone to take, but you'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know. I hope he doesn't get violent because I know bats. Are not, are not, well, that's why I watch your way. Well, you put your intentions, no violence. Okay. And your approach. Okay. Like a soft approach, no violence. Okay. And you can give you some time, self time to, it's like, it's going to be okay. And you can visualize it how it goes too. Okay. Okay. Blessings. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we have Steven. Hello, Redman. Greetings. Greetings to you. How are you doing? Doing well. Sweet, sweet. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Much love to you. Um, I was wondering if you can help me with an awesome dream I had uh, uh, like a week ago. Um, basically, uh, I was with my, I believe it was with my family members and some other people. And uh, we started off like a, it's kind of like a mission briefing. Like uh, we had to go to a certain location and then clean up like a whole bunch of like scrap, like a, like, I guess you can not, I don't know, it might be junk or not, but, but it was, it was just a big old pile. So uh, we made our way to this one area and there was just a lot of stuff. We were trying to get it done in one day 
And uh, we just had all this stuff we had to clear out and uh, remove and stuff. And uh, so um, it gets toward the end of the day and uh, we basically didn't get it uh, finished. So uh, what was left over was like a whole bunch of these little metal like alternator looking things, uh, battery looking uh, objects, a whole bunch of small. They're all the same. And uh, then we're all left over. So uh, we just left them there and we say, oh, we have to come back. We can't finish it off. So uh, what happened is that uh, before we left, what was really interesting is that uh i had this like it looked almost like a like a ghostbuster gun this big thing and uh it would it would spew out like very vibrant pink like mossy carpet looking things and we started wrapping uh a whole bunch of things with this thing we'd go around and try to wrap as much it's like a carpet it's like we would wrap go around in circles and try to wrap all this stuff and it was like a kind of like dripping too and but it was the carpet it was was, was weird and it was very vibrant pink and uh we try to do as much as we can and then uh we eventually got out there so we have more info thank you well, we feel that is you're building a reality for others. And you can say, well, I got kind of infiltrated a little bit. Others beings found it and how to break it apart. So the technology you are finding is kind of keep it together. It was done behind the scenes, but it was something that you're. So it's, it's a reality that you still have. But sometimes when you're working on these things, it gets found. In the astral world, but it's going to go into the physical somewhere. It's not saying that it is exactly, but it, I don't believe it's a future timeline here. I believe it's for some other world, but it is assisting this reality for what I can see. And it feels like some of those beings you did invite to see how, how it would re- react to other beings. So that's what I see there. That's nice. Sweet, 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 awesome. Um, and, uh, second question, I'll just, uh, leave it open, connect to my guides or higher self or anybody who wants to come through. Thank you. Well, there is an elephant energy. I'm very connected to you. I've been a commander on a ship. Um, you could say to protect the humans or understand the humans more often. You're like one of the few elephant beings, at least in the primitive times that are actually interested in humans to, to explore what a human is. Of course, you're a humanoid elephant, but... You can say depends on where you are in the galaxy. Humans can be seen as not the most positive beings. Obviously, see what this world's going through. Uh, but you're one that just was on the human side, the human development. Uh, they don't say if it was Palladians or who it was that you're interacting with, but you are not one to uh, cause them difficulty. Like you're helping them with uh, resources so they can survive on their world. So what other world, other beings like reptilians or whoever was taking away their resources. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Okay. Thank you. Very cool. Up next, we have James. Hello. Yes, greetings. I was wondering about why the dreams of Aspen, Colorado. Is that related to my uh, connections to Lilith? And does she have a message for me? Yeah, the Aspen has to do with the. There's a lot of elite energies there, you know, Illuminati energies. I feel like there's some kind of event or something going on there. Yeah, so Lilith's energy, some of her energy actually gets abused there, you know, through human trafficking. So I feel like you're actually protecting her, which I can see there. <laughs> so it's just, it feels like she was going through a great deal of suffering. You're there to help her through it as well, she was there. <laughs> so, but yeah, there's some kind of conference, at least it's done quietly, that's going on right now. Or agenda, you can say. I see. Uh, you tell me where my uh, Syrian connections or connections to you or messages from you? We have been a Syrian Palladian. You're one to mix things up to connect to other uh, beings to enhance DNA, but also enhance knowledge, not to be afraid of others. So you're you're known to be like a Syrian being to visit other other like kind of like a Christopher Columbus, where you visit other uh, you know other star places where either said they did not exist or you know, whatever kind of myths that were put out there. And you actually created, I believe, some civilizations out in the Pleiades from a Syrian perspective. 
So, you know, we weren't from each other. It wasn't any war or anything like that from what I could see. Blessings. I see. You. Okay, thank you. Blessings. Up next, I have Marvin's questions. His first question, he says, Yesterday, I woke up with a distorted frequency in my right ear, and it continued today like water got trapped in, in it. Only thing is, I heard a low frequency around the time of the basil's takeoff. What happened, and what's the remedy, please? But I feel like it was connected to reptilian frequencies. So, I believe the ship was being protected when it was going up. But you felt some retaliation, it feels like. You felt a lot of positive work, but I also feel other beings are a little bit aggravated. That's what I pick up there. So, uh, it is progress. Maybe not the progress people are looking for, because there are hidden agendas there with that spacecraft going up in the air, but Either way, it's part of the human growth that's necessary here. So you can say kind of the space program. Some of these space programs are kind of cult-like in some regard. And uh, you're picking up on the other agendas that are going on there. Hey, thank you. The second question uh, is kind of cryptic. He says, mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen a black ejected... Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, wait. I seen that black ejected its contents yesterday in the Centaurus galaxy. Are there any messages or knowledge from yeah. it? Well, it's dark matter. Dark matter that he was connected to. I believe I believe it was part of growing life or expanding life. It's like think like trees out in the middle of the sea, of the ocean. Is this you're creating a you say technically kind of like or another reality. Uh other dimensions are opening up to. So think of like uh, beings that go through dark matter, like it's kind of going through a black hole and you end up in like a tropical forest or something like that. Because you see tropical trees in space. So think of that. That's a new one. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Yeah, um, he's, he's making some progress, as you can see. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> All right. Um, up next, we have uh, Karam. Hi, blessings, uh, Redman. Greetings. Greetings. Nice to talk to you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. um, I was told I have connections to a healer. One of my past life lifetimes, I was a healer, um, mm -hmm. powerful, powerful healer, but I never found out who. Uh, I'm wondering who it is, and am I going to get to unlock these powers uh, before uh, this lifetime is over? Without giving a name specifically, but a uh, you had Asian incarn basically like you're like a yogi during the uh, Asia China Ming Dynasty time frame. You've okay. had actually several incarnations connected to that time, that time period. So you're like an alternative healer. Uh, you did connect to magic, but more in your ancient times. Oh, mm -hmm. the name I get is like Masterus or something like that. <laughs> that was more of your ancient name. So you're like a, I do see like a Babylonian energy connected to you also. Like a, not like a Babylonian king lifetime. So. Um, would you recommend I connect to, I try to connect to the, uh... So you said uh, a healer, an alternative healer in the Ming Dynasty or something like yes. that? Yes. Well, I would look at the Babylonian energies first. Babylonian, okay. Look at Babylon and then, yes, go into the Ming and what you feel from there. You probably feel a lot of nature around you because it does feel like you kept yourself hidden quite a bit. Like people would find you, and you're like in a hut in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. You have several lifetimes like that. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, because you're just away from everybody, and and it just yeah, it would just stumble upon you every now and then. Yeah, that's uh, that's in line with how I feel. Uh, great. My second question is, uh, I'm looking for more motivation to increase my uh, spiritual practice on a daily basis. There's a lot of resistance, a lot of I got knocked off of uh, good habits and back into terrible habits. Uh, it's like yeah. a daily struggle. So, the la can you tell me one of my aspects that I'm 
Tell me about one of my aspects that I could be healing by doing my own clearing. Tell me about one of my worst off. Like I get more motivation if you tell me something horrible that's happening to my aspects, basically. Tell me the worst thing you can. I hope I don't bring the mood down or anything. Tell me no, something. No, no. Um, well, yeah, you did have a reptilian. It's always going to catch a reptilian lifetime. Actually, a, uh, a reptilian archon energy where you're experimenting on various different beings. Kind of like... You yeah, you're kind of like a mad scientist. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. And that's very. And some of that you injected in your own energy, but you somehow survived it, <laughs> while others did not. So like you're kind of mutating yourself, also. <laughs> it's, it's not one of your highest moments. Let's put it <laughs> so it's like you're trying to figure out God. Like you're trying to be not necessarily be God, but just understand how God works. Uh, with these alien beings, like you would. I do see you abducting beings or finding like a corpse or something and working with that. <laughs> just trying uh, to figure things out. Just, to just tell me a bit more detail of how how brutal my methods are and as that aspect. Oh yeah, it was well at first it looks like you're taking this innocence from anywhere. <laughs> but I think after a while your conscience felt kind of bad about that. So then you went after kind of those after a war would happen, you just grab whoever's half living <laughs> uh do yeah. experiments that way it seems and like torture experiments or? uh yeah you can call it, you didn't look at it that way but yeah it was kind of like that <laughs> you weren't seeing it that way yeah you just you're you just want to figure things out <laughs> it's, it's no different than you know your renaissance time period when they're just cutting people up trying to figure out how the body works it's similar to that but you did this alone though <laughs> And we did had others around you, but you're always kind of out there. <laughs> so that aspect is basically a, he's struggling. He's trying to figure out God. He's, he's delusional. Like he's doesn't mind. He doesn't see it as harming yeah. others, but he's doing all sorts of harms. To others. Yeah. You can say technically it's still going on right now. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's well, that's not great, hard. but. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it's all right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Blessings. Blessing. Okay, blessings. Thank you. A bless this evening is me. Thank you again for coming in. Blessings. All right. Thanks, Redmond. Blessings. Um, blessings. For my first question, I woke up this morning uh, feeling no less tired than I did before going to sleep. So I'm curious to know where would my soul say it is its favorite place to go in astral to relax and restore energy so I can set the intention to visit before going to sleep tonight? Well, there's... Because it all depends on your mood. Mm. <laughs> so there's a Palladian world that comes first, like a tropical paradise. You can say there's nudity there. <laughs> I don't right. know how to get it, but a place, well, the nudity is because people are not afraid to hide themselves. So they look at it that way. Mm -hmm. So just there's no hidden agendas. Uh, you see clear skies, you can see clearness everywhere. It's kind of like being in Hawaii, but a higher frequency also. Not Sounds necessary. nice. Huh? It's not, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Lemuria, even Pleiades. It doesn't even have to be that either. I feel like it's very, it's in the somewhere Pleiades like. Pleiades okay. Somewhere. Um, there's also an Arcturian reality where there's, where you see planets, you see growth, you see worlds being developed, you just see just, you know, creation and what you can do. Where, where do you exist with that? You know, you're allowing, you're not stopping creation. Because some beings, even higher dimensional beings, stop creation. Oh, that's not, that shouldn't be like that. You know, in, in your world, it's a free, free will reality. Mm -hmm. Now, with uh, the energy that I'm feeling, you know, like with waking up this morning, um, yeah, like, I guess what would be the, the best prescription? an astral for what I'm going through at this moment to feels set like the intention to visit. Well, it feels like you're connected to Archon energies. It has to do with the origins of the city that you're living in, Chicago. Uh, okay. So you're actually going into the lower astral of where that city was built. And yes, there is a cultic beings there. They are wearing hoods and all that stuff. Hmm. So I'm not just, seeing any of that in my dreams. Uh, no, but, but my dreams are like a montage. Right. Yeah. But that's, like that's, yeah. Oh, Masonic energies. Yeah. Both into the the city landscape, the roads. So the the roads, of course, they're not always going to show that in a dream. But 
the roads. It all started with the grid. Right. Build the grid, and you build the city. The grid is that's the thing they'll look into. Yeah. yeah. All right, interesting. Yeah, I was like playing around with uh, like the the quote from Back to the Future: "Roads mm-hmm. where we're going, we don't need no roads." Well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's what every, it should be that way everywhere. Yeah, I feel like roads are just tacky. You know, when you look at the landscapes yeah, on the planet. So, yeah. Well, there's nothing that gets a archon being more high to have all these people on one going one way, you know, mm. or the stoplight. And always, the more the better. It just gives them a high. <laughs> Interesting. The energy yeah. that goes out in traffic is not pleasant. It's like hurting the people, like sheep. Yeah, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Even even if you give them a sense to go there, like work or meet somebody, there's still an agenda. You know, it's still on their road. <laughs> right, right. Instead of you get on a ship and just fly, do whatever you want, go to a dimension, whatever. Mm-hmm. Here, it's just. You know, Interesting. Well, thank you for that. Like a forest, you know, like, you know, a lot of times, you know, ancient times, it's a forest or a desert. There's no, you know, you have to walk through the desert, but there's still no, there's no roads there. You can do whatever you want. There's no one way, right? Right. All right. Well, very interesting. Thank you for that. Um, For my second question, I leave it open. Um, I was looking to see if the flower elementals have any messages for me. But it does seem like they bring laughter to you. They do bring perfume smells. I don't know if you smell anything, but uh, they do show a yeah a fairy vibration that comes through there. It's basically for, for you to loosen up. You're yeah. trying to, but it's, I feel the fairy elementals will help with that. Yeah, I've been uh, tending to uh, the flowers in my backyard, uh, kind of like mm-hmm. the foster parents for it, ter- taking care of it daily. And it's giving me like peace, you know, when I'm out there just flowering them and, mm-hmm. or watering them. Um, and that's why I just feel like a connection that like they could possibly help bring some peace within uh, the environment that I'm living in, you know. So I create like this kind of safe space for me spiritually. So what we feel there is, uh, you, we do feel like now it's up to you. But you can get like a fairy statue. We do. Small yeah. one. Oh yeah. 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 Or we'll have one that you have for yourself. Like in your room, mm. one that you feel connected to. Uh, that'll give you a personal connection to the fairies. I'll help with that. I'll help you manifest it. Nice. It, yeah. Maybe even give it a name. Yeah, you can find something, you know, attractive, but not too, that's inexpensive. Nice. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I've been feeling like more of a connection with them, I guess, is yeah. also. You need that. Yeah. Just to heal anxiety and, and just tension. Yeah, it's a lot from the collective that I've just seen to take on as my own, you know, so. I could... Well, yeah, because the humans, as you know, like, what do we need to worry about? What kind of problems do we need? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's why I cut myself off from the news. It's just, exactly. it's just, it's just hitting me too hard. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's your energy here is to break that down, but humans still are holding it up, as you can see. It's like a bridge, so. But you are... Showing alternative energies. There's many just don't want to see it right now. As you... mm-hmm. It feels like some of the lower astral does play games with your mind every once in a while. Is that something? Okay. Yeah, yeah, but um, well, yeah, like, what do you seeing from your perspective? Uh, it's not every now and then a demonic being might come to you just to make you mad, piss you off. Like, oh, okay. It's actually a brother from a lower astral lifetime. Yeah, that's nothing new. Unrelated to yours here, but it's like it's like you want to say it's your birthday, and it's like, oh, by the way, it's not your birthday. Here's a birthday cake. No, you can't have it. Just it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a prankster type of thing. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's nothing. That's no big deal. Uh, well, I've seen with that then is just to explore your darker self. Then. Yeah, that Thank was you. something that I went on a little bit today. Um, yeah. Or th- not today, but this week um, yeah. after the Saturday webinar because uh, mm-hmm. I'm starting to reassess a lot of my closed mindedness is towards yeah. the light and the dark and, you know, what yeah. what the labels that I put on things and, you know, if I'm well, really just denying pieces of myself and delaying my own progress. Well, I'll give you this. This is what yours. You have been a spiritual propagandist in your past life. 
somewhere, like a female lifetime, hmm. where you're like a spiritual healer and teacher, but it was kind of a fraud scheme or something like that. Hmm. I see. So that's why uh, I'm sensing, sensitive that's why to you it sense now. It so easy. Yeah, that's why you pick up on it so easy. Yeah, okay. you know it right, right when you see it because you've done it in your. Yeah, it was, that's. It's on a Palladian world somewhere like that. Okay. But you didn't, you didn't think you were doing anything wrong at the time. Yeah, but just like a lot of these people. Yeah, yeah, no idea. And then, yeah, you were pretty big. <laughs> yeah, from what I can see. Wow. Something like a Sylvia Brown type of presence. You had a huge. Yeah, you were known. Okay. Well, I see how that is useful nowadays. I guess yeah. going forward, it'll make itself more evident. You know, so this is what deep healing is not the easiest thing. These aren't easy things to see, <laughs> but for that to come out of nowhere, it shows that you're ready to see it. Then. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not not taking it personal. I mean, we've no, all no, been there and played no, every oh, role. Definitely. Yeah. But, but that's that shows a lot of material. Uh, there's many that would say a lot of different things right now. <laughs> hmm. As you probably know. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of processing to go through. Okay, well, I, I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, thank you again for yes, your assistance. Of course. Lessons. 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 Great night.